Hello, and welcome to Mitchell Consulting's webinar series for our Mitchell University. Today, we're going to be working with in for facts, and we're going to be talking about journal entries. For the purpose of today's demo, we're working with in for facts version 7.7 .7 for our demo. And I'm going to talk about doing journal entries. <laughs> so let's um, go to our main menu. So here we're going to go into the general ledger system, and we're going to talk about journal entries. Journal entries are a way of allowing us to enter transactions to, um, to general ledger that are not normally coming from the other modules. For example, um, things like depreciation schedules, maybe some manual adjustments, and, and, uh, <coughs> and transactions that are not actually posted from the other modules. So let's go here and we say we have our journal entry on the menu, and we have journal entries, and we have prior period journal entries. The difference being is that um, right now, if we notice when we open up our journal entry screen, we can see that the current period, in this case for the demo, the current period is June of 2010. You can see that, as we know from facts, we can post to the current period and one period into the future. Now. Once we close periods from the other modules, we normally don't post into those. But there are times when we have to do what's known as a prior period adjustment. As you can see here, we go back to the menu. We have the option. We'll talk about this, this today, the prior period entry. So let's go back and look at this one here. Again, we can see it's relatively a simple screen. We have our period. So again, we are in the current period of June. So we can post to a current period as well as one period going forward. We have our journal. Here we can search, and this is predefined in our setup. We set up our facts and our infrequent file maintenance. And this just makes it easy for reporting purposes. For example, the journals that begin with 1,000 are from sales, 2,000s are payable, 3,000 receivables, and so on. So normally what I like to do is when I do this, I would like to use the miscellaneous, or here, the 8,000. The reason why I do this is it makes it easier. Since I am entering a manual journal entry, it just lets it easier for reporting purposes for me to look at it. Typically, there happens to be an out-of-balance condition, you know, and there's a, you know, maybe my receivables or my payables are out of balance, or my inventory is out of balance. The first thing I want to do is I want to focus on the manual journal entries, or the journal entries that the users make to those accounts. This way I can assume that the postings from the daily sales register and from purchasing and so on that are affecting the inventory account. You know, I don't want to look at those first. I want to focus on my um, miscellaneous. Here, again, you can enter an entry. As we know from facts, we have a couple things. We can go to the next record here. We can do a search, so we can click. And we can see that we have these entries already in here. And these are just some of the transactions that are here. So if we look at one, again, we can see here this entry date. You can see this is a PO register. You can see the effects here. So let's just uh, go back and go back in. And we can also here just go next. So we're going to click Next, and we're going to see here that we see the, the next entry this way. So we went to this one here, and again, we can see the transactions. If we want to add one, we can just go in, and we can select here, Next Record. So here we're going to go, we're going to create a record. This is our entry date. This is going into the system. You know, right now my demo is set for this date. I'm going to go ahead and just, since my current period is June 2010, I'm just going to go ahead and put this into that date. I can put a memo. Again, this is just references. We can say uh, this is um, for, let's say, June 2010. So here we can add, again, if we know our GL account, we can add it. We can do our search by pressing the little magnifying glass here, or we can do our F2 down here. I'm going to go ahead and press F2. <clears throat> and again, have my searches. As we know from the navigation portion, 
of facts, we can do some things here. Right now, you can see we're sorting by alpha. So we have alpha, the GL number, the description. If we want to search by GL number, we can select this, and we can set this to search by GL number. Maybe it's just easier because we know what the numbers start with. For example, if I put 5, you're going to get all the um, general ledger that starts with a 5. We can also do uh, key searches. So for example here, if I'm looking for a certain thing and I type in, let's say, um, type in petty and click go, you're going to see it's going to find a word. So the way this description works is that you can actually go to a specific one or you can type it in this way. Another thing you can do is you can set the options. So again, when we come out of here and we do our search, you can see by default we're sort searching by alpha. <clears throat> but let's say every time we want to come in, we want to search by the GL number. What I can do is I can go to my options, and I can go to my preferences here, and I can change this to the GL number. I can save this as a default, <clears throat> my user default, since I'm logged in as with my user code. I want that to be mine. I can also change the columns here, so I have GL alpha description. I can go to my columns. You can see I'm using all available columns, but I can move these around. If I wanted to have the GL number first, I would take this, move it to the available, click where I want it, and move it back. So now I have it in that order. So again, I can just click OK, and I can click OK. When I cancel and go back in, you can see now I have it in the order that I want to have it. You can see now the sort by default is a GL number. So I'm sorting by GL number. And again, I can do it this way. So it begins with or go to. So like we saw before, if I put a 5, it gives me everything that starts with a 5. As I type, you'll see it gets narrow and so on. It finds those numbers. If I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, we can also go to the keywords. So we can do a couple things. We can say we want to look at, um, we say just petty. We're going to get the two that say petty cash. If we go in and we type in petty, or we type in, let's say, um, clearing. We'll get where it either finds petty or clearing. If I select this as and, you'll see I'm not going to get any results because I don't have anything with those two. Again, we just select our account. We can see the memo being carried over from above. We can do those if we want. We can determine if we want a debit or credit. So let's say we're going to do a, a debit of $100. You can see now we automatically go to the next line. You can see here our undistributed amount, our total debits, and our total credits. We know that when we finish, our debits have to equal credits, which makes our undistributed amount equal to zero. So let's do F2 again. Let's just put in, uh, let's say here. Repair, and we can put in 100, and you can see now that we're distributed. We can continue on if we wish, or we can do F4 to stop. So here we have some information. So we have the GL information with the corresponding debits and credits. We can click on our header, and yeah, we can look at header information we wish, and we can click Done. Okay, so if we go back here and look, we can call up the one we just did right here. We can add to it, make modifications to it, and so on. If we want to add some more lines, we can just go here to Add. We can select an account. Continue on. And 
And again, notice we can see our total debits and credits. Let's just go pick another account. And if we put 125, again, we're distributed equally. We can do F4, and we can go done. Click done, and we're back to the menu. So what we did is we went into our journal entry. We went into journal entries. And here we can select our period. Current period, <clears throat> we can go one into the future. Again, we can select our journal types. And I typically like to use the miscellaneous since I am entering these journal entries. It just makes it easier for me on reporting purpose to see where they are. I can um, search the entries I already have. I can go to next. And again, you see we have nothing in July because we did the other ones in the current period. So we're just going to go ahead and add this. Again, we're going to change our date for the current period. You can see here. We have our current period. Actually, we're just going to go here. And this, since we're in July, let's put that into July so we don't get that message. We can put our memo. Let's put rent adjustment. And again, we can we knew our GL account. We can type it in. We can do F2 to search. And you can see how we change this. So we're searching by the GL numbers. We can go here, we can put our debit, go ahead and put our corresponding account. And so on. When we're finished, we just hit F4, we select done, and we have our transactions in. Again, very simple process to do that. Now, we can also do prior period adjustments. Remember, we go back here into this one we can see that we only have the option for the current and one month forward. So if I try to enter something in here, and I try to set the date for, say, May, you're going to see it's not within the specified period. Okay, We're going to have an issue with that. We'd have to change that. So what we want to do then we could do it that way, but what we want to do is we want to go in and do a um, prior period adjustment. So we're going to go back to a closed period. So here we can go into our prior period adjustment. Again, the screens look the same, no difference. You can see here. Again, we can go back pretty far. So we can do this since for our current period is June of 2010. We can do it here for all these transactions. Let's say we want to do it back to last year. We want to make an adjustment. We can go ahead and do that. Again, we can do our, we're going to use the miscellaneous. We're going to add. And again, we can use the icons up here, or we can do the function keys. So by doing F1, I'm going to set it up. It's going to default to December 31st, the last day of that prior period, because we're figuring this is some year and adjustments we're doing. We're going to do some year-end adjustments. We've already closed out the year, but we need to do some filing. So again, let's say we're going to do some uh, miscellaneous expense here. Again, F2. And we're going to do... Uh, and some adjustments. And again, you see it's pulling over the uh, memo. And we can do it this way. When we're done, we do F4. You can see here that we're done. And now for the prior period, we want to do an update. So let's go here to our prior period update. <clears throat> and you can see this program will update account balances based on the prior period journal entries. 
retains will be updated as required. And you'll see a journal will print so we can have all that information. Remember to run the following, OK? Journal print for the period. So let's look at our period. So we're going to go ahead and let's see if we have this in here. And again, we can close out that period. We're not going to close out that period. We want to keep it open. So we can do our run. And now we've updated our prior periods. So again, here you can see the information. We can actually scroll through. And when we're done, we have our update. So we go back into our prior period journal entry. And we did the 8,000. Actually, we did this for. Again, we can see our adjustment here for that one. Let's actually switch that to May, our dates. So let's do this one here. And let's choose one of these. Step forward is done. We click done. We do our prior period update. We go to our last period. We're going to run the update. Here we're going to say yes to close. And now we close out our prior period. So again, a very simple process to use with facts, journal entries. Again, allows us to go in, create journal entries for the current period, and do uh, uh, prior period entries, and then update them. So this webinar is being recorded. It will be available on our website. You can visit us at www.mitchellgroup.com to view this, plus our other um, webinar series. Once again, this concludes our webinar today. We thank you for your time.